Guys, absolutely crazy, bonkers, ridiculous, 10-year anniversary Hall of Heroes event. Basically, we are getting every single Hall of Heroes again over the course of five and a half months. Yes, this is a five and a half month event, which is, I mean, it's crazy, but also come to us once people playing Summoner's War as much as possible, as long as possible. They're like, we'll give all of the people that took breaks, because a lot of people, even if they've been playing for 10 years, you take a break here and there, or maybe you go on vacation, you miss a Hall of Heroes, especially if it's an LD one, then, I mean, I know the tryhards don't ever miss any Hall of Heroes, right? But especially if it's an LD one, you don't have any access to it again after that, or you have very little access, you got to get lucky and summon it. Because we do, we talk about it every so often in the summon videos, it's like, oh, hey, but this is a Hall of Heroes, and the people keep commenting, they're like, yeah, but that would be great for me, I'll take that Hall of Heroes, because I haven't... I wasn't here for that Hall of Heroes, or I missed it, or whatever the case may be. But, yeah, five months, every Hall of Heroes is coming back. Absolutely ridiculous, but we knew they were going to do something, right? We knew they were going to do something ever since they put this little Hall of Heroes dungeon right there on the map. We're like, something's happening with this Hall of Heroes. It's not, it's not that they're just going to put the Hall of Heroes logo there for no reason out of nowhere. Something's, uh, or I'm sure a lot of people figured that something was, uh, Something was coming, right? So, uh, anyway, we have this is just a normal Hall of Heroes explanation. And we usually get these Hall of Heroes, um, the choose your own Hall of Heroes uh, every year. So, and everyone just keeps choosing the LDs. But yeah, this is absolutely ridiculous. It's a choose your own Hall of Heroes every week for five and a half months. Absolutely ridiculous. We're going to go over a uh, list. One by one, because of course we are, because there's so many things here. If if you want the TLDR, pick the LD ones. Just figure out what the best of the two LD ones for that uh, for that slot, and that's it. But we'll uh, also we get some mystical scrolls, Devamon LD scroll. But really, that's nowhere. That pales in comparison to getting access to all of these LD fours that have been elusive for so many years, especially for new players. We're gonna go week by week, starting with week one all the way to week 24. Week one is kind of already controversial, but I feel like a lot of the weeks are gonna be like that, depending on your priorities and your focus in the game. So if you are focused on making fast, consistent dungeon teams, and you feel like you're still kind of lacking, Luna is a great option for especially Abyss Dungeons where they have a lot of HP and continuous damage doesn't work and the best option to take those Abyss Dungeons down is enemy based on uh, enemy based on <laughs> HP is damage based on enemy max HP. However, we do also have a lot of good options for that. We have Spectre, we have Shaman, we have Veramos, we have Sigmaris, we have brand new Water Geralt. So there are a lot of options. Her AI is really good though. So as long as she has uh, full HP, she's gonna use her skill three. Uh, if you are not trying to make faster dungeon teams and you feel like you're fine in that department, Jin the Light Ninja might be your number one point. Well, he should be your number one priority if that is not the case because he has a 30% speed lead, which is nice. It could be okay with Tion. Tion has very low base speed. Kabila, very high base speed light units because this is for light. So uh, you can use this with Kabila, an attack power buffer, and a Fat Lucian for arena offense. You can use this in Siege. This is my favorite place to use him. Is in Siege with a Light Harg if you happen to have the Light Harg. I know, not everyone. Most people, I would say, don't have the Light Harg. But if you do, this could be a great combination with the Light Harg and a Fat Lucian. Boosts up the so, uh, Swift Light Harg. Boosts up the attack age of Lucian and attack power buff and then big nuke on the enemies so if that is your focus this is going to be the best one for you if uh dungeon team speed is your focus then this is going to be the best one for you after that we got the normal elements i feel that Del delphoi is the best one for this she's just great support unit these two are good as well but is people aren't going to be trying to trying to go for these normal element units from these Hall of Heroes dungeons. They're looking for the LDs. Week number two, best choices are going to be, again, the LDs because they are the rarest ones. Not that I use Guillaume for anything necessarily. Personally, I think this is a fantastic unit. In terms of what you should six star first, I would put him at the top of the list and then kind of like this, but that's not what we're doing. We're talking about the units that you should try to get from the Hall of Heroes, right? So there's no point in getting Liesl since he's a very easily, maybe not a very easily attainable unit, but you can still summon him. I mean, if you have like 500 scrolls, your 500 mystical scrolls, a thousand mystical scrolls throughout the course of like a couple months, you're going to wind up getting Liesl at some 
point. Knock on what I know some of you don't have lethal, whatever, but in terms of the ones that are the rarest and have the most value, uh, Arya the Light Second, but she's got a great skill three that does a lot of crowd control. Also on Revenge is a nice trap for RTA. Guillaume is kind of fun in his own right. I don't, I can't say I use him everywhere. I really haven't been using him lately. Liesl is personally my favorite of all of these because he has gotten so much better over the years. And then we have Asasis and I forgot the last, the Fire Kung Fu Girl. She's the Fire Kung Fu Girl. Lei, Mei, Mei, Lei. Yep, probably right, maybe. Week number three, another controversial one because we just did a video showing Diaz and how some people were using him. But personally, I think Eridos is a fantastic unit. He is one of my favorite fun i guess guilty pleasure units he's got the skill three it's an aoe it absorbs attack age it's really nice i have him on despair he's got double aoe's he's great for toa he's great for i was using him for arena offense for the longest time fantastic unit actually performed really well for so long uh that is my my personal preference for that uh, some of you might want to go for Diaz. again that's just you personally draco's a fantastic unit for pvp cleaves he does randomly do one buff or another, so sometimes he disappoints you. Uh, this Taurus, the oh the, the Kung Fu girl was Hong Hua. It wasn't even whatever I whatever dumb thing I said. But um, this is an increased cooldown bomber for a uh, four star that does increased cooldowns. If you're really looking for increased cooldowns, though, you could just use the Fire Succubus, and she's a she's a great unit in her own respect. I think that's an underrated unit as well. Uh, and then we have the Water Samurai that is a fusion unit, so I really would not prioritize him. Uh, again, it's going to be the same thing. Broken record is going to be the LDs in the first two spots every single time. I'm just letting you know in advance. Week number four. This one is kind of, there's nothing that's super crazy amazing in this one. Lanet was, I think she was pretty decent when she first came out. She does damage based on main max HP. She also is one of the biggest healers in the entire game because she heals for some of the damage that she does. And if she does damage based on Amy Max HP and the bosses have crazy amounts of HP, she can heal for a ridiculous amount. I mean, overfill more than you would ever need. But technically, she is one of the best healers in the game with her skill three. Um, I, I think that I think that it really like it, it almost doesn't matter for these. Pick whatever you want, I would say. Uh, and then Cichlid is a, you know, she's been a staple in Siege for a long time. She just got nerfed, though, which kind of is a bummer. I think Ryan personally is... In terms of the most fun units in here, I think Ryan is the most fun, but I know people will complain if I try to put Ryan in the best choice. And then the Fire uh, fire BKs actually has some nice... I never find that this works. It works on paper. It's a fantastic unit on paper because it goes through death prevention mechanics, but actually using it, there always seems to be something that gets in the way, and this never works the way I want it to. So uh, that's that's my critique of uh, the Fire BK, but he actually does have some interesting mechanics. So if you haven't taken a look at him, then he is a pretty cool, pretty cool unit. Week number five, this is your chance to get some of these gimmicky combo LD4s. We actually did a video on Talasha not that long ago uh, as well. I think like a week ago uh, as well. If you have Leo, you have Ragdoll, this might be a great opportunity to pick up this Talasha. If you have Ramagos, you like to use Second Awaken Ramagos. Again, great opportunity to use Talasha because she will give your unit a turn and give them the vampire buff and decrease their HP so that they actually do, like Leo will do ignore defense, the gimmick combo that we saw a couple days ago. Ramagos will be able to do his clean shot even if your opponent's trying to avoid him. So this is another one. Uh, he also has a speed lead, this light death knight. He's got another gimmicky uh, skill three if you've been away from the game for a while. He did actually get changed. Water Lich is a nice unit against control teams. Uh, I find that I do enjoy using him every so often, not even as a gimmick uh, YouTube video or whatever. I'll just stick him in because he works. He's also got a uh, HP leader skill. This Fire Assassin is a nice counter to Riley teams because she can do ignore defense as part of her passive. Uh, and she also mitigates the healing. And then Olivia, unless you're doing, if you're using Copper Bulldozer and Siege a lot, you could use uh, Olivia's always been a good combination with those. But I just, this is my personal list. This is not a, a huge difference though. Like personally, if you like this one more, go with that one, whatever. Uh, especially if you don't have some of the combo units. Everyone's got their own preferences. If Riley's a big struggle, you might want to go for I mean, you shouldn't even be going for the normal elements anyway. We shouldn't even be talking about them too much. I just want to give you guys some, some input on what they do. But 
Week six, again, LDs at the top, of course. Dark Rakshasa was buffed recently, so she's got defense breaks now with the skill three, which is kind of nice. Uh, I never really got into the light puree. I know it doesn't go on cooldown, etc., etc., but I never really got her to work the way I wanted it to. Uh, I built her on multiple accounts. Never really, never really panned out the way it would have uh, on paper and uh, in actual gameplay. Water Anubis is a great unit. He prevents things from reviving. I think he's a solid, uh, a solid build for for anyone doing PvP. Uh, Wind Anubis, uh, sorry, Wind Horus. Wind Horus is another combination with Copper Bulldozer. Great for um, great for defense-based bruise teams. And then the Fire Jackal Lantern, which actually also got a buff. Uh, he's not terrible. He's definitely better than he used to be, but not really anything crazy for picking over LDs in a Hall of Heroes event. Week 7, basically a no-brainer. If you don't have Gemini, choose Gemini, and that's it, because Gemini is one of the best LD4s in the game. If you do already have a Gemini, and you also have Bering, you might still want to choose Gemini because he's a great unit for Guild Siege. You might want to build multiple of him. He's such a fantastic unit. He's got speed lead, he's got AoE strips into defense breaks between his skill 2 and his passive. He gives himself extra turns with his skill 1. Potentially a crazy unit. Uh, I use him all the time. He's a great unit. Bering is also a really solid unit for an LD4. He has a strip into a silence. He doesn't have the craziest base speed, so I put him on Swift personally, but you can get outsped if you have a speed lead and bearing and someone else has like a water puppeteer, you're going to get outsped. If they have an F, you're going to get outsped because you can't really compete at that level with his base speed. Uh, after that, really kind of doesn't matter. Water Joker is a pretty decent unit if you started playing the beginning of the game and you haven't been around uh, since then. Water Joker did get a buff, so he's got bombs, he comes back from the dead, and he's a, he's a pretty decent unit in that regard. Fire Samurai is probably an underrated unit for a lot of you. He's got multiple AoEs, he's got a defense break, and he's good against clearing lots of trash waves. That's what they call trash waves of enemies. Personally, I don't really like the uh, Wind Pirate Captain, so that is why I put him on the last one. He's could be useful. I mean, anything can be useful to me if you make it useful, but this is, uh, it. it's basically a no-brainer for this one. Choose Gemini. Week number eight, in case you haven't paid attention to the Dark Neo Stone Fighter, by the way, LDs are on the top, as they always are. Uh, Dark Neo Stone Fighter skill three goes through uh, damage reduction effects like invincibility, is a fun unit. I built a double, uh, what is his name, Carl? Built a double Carl team. Uh, Tiana, Galleon, double Carl for funzy gimmicks uh, for arena offense and actually did pretty well. I still have everything ruined. Um, Light Undyne, not it's it's better on paper. It actually did get better over time as well because uh, in the beginning it was kind of doo-doo. We built this, we tried playing around with it. Shimate is a great unit. Clara is a great unit. Ajir is a, uh, a great unit as well. Clara is pretty OP, but these are easier to get, so it doesn't really matter what's uh, on the bottom of the list, but Shimate is a little bit harder to get than Clara and Ajir. Week number nine, nothing really too crazy must pick like the Gemini week, for example, but uh, Dark Jack-O-Lantern is at number one because a lot of people really enjoy using this special Dark Jack-O-Lantern single target cleave. It's uh, Dark Jack-O-Lantern and El Sharion, Fran, uh, what else? Fire Nagami. Uh, it's, you need a lot of very fast runes to make that team work, like a lot of very fast runes, but it is a kind of nice combination uh, and then we have, if if you're interested in that, if you feel like you don't have enough crazy fast runes to make that work, then you're probably not going to wind up building it or using it. Light Assassin did get better over time. She did get buffs. Uh, Tetra is still a solid unit. I mean, the, the last three don't matter. The Wind Magic Knight is, uh, she does damage based on enemy max HP. She also does some what slows and decreases attack age. Things like that. She's a fusion unit, though. Uh, I have I can't remember the last time I used her. She does multi hits. Otherwise, she'd be better in uh, in giants. Uh, Abyss giants B12. Uh, Arnold, you know what Arnold does? HP based damage. Uh, Tetra's still a good unit, but Baramoss is just there's a bigger gap between Baramoss and Tetra now than there used to be. Still a good unit. Still a decent uh, decent thing that gets picked enough in RTA. But we're really talking about the LD4s mostly, and this is the one that gets used the most out of the two LD4 choices. Week number 10, another no-brainer considering the Light Phantom Thief is probably the worst LD4 in the entire game. We built him, we skilled him up, we tested him on multiple occasions. He is just such a nothing burger. There's no reason I would ever use him over Chloe or other units that are similar to him. He really doesn't do very much. He does invincibility, which can be stripped, and that's that. He doesn't have a passive. He's like a, he's a support unit 
He, you can't, you wouldn't use him in a turn one. You wouldn't use him in a turn. He's just, no one uses him. And there's a reason for that. Again, we built him, we tried him. Uh, Kamiya is actually a pretty decent unit. We've had a lot of fun with her in um, in Guild Siege, especially some people like to use her in RTA if they're feeling risky. Uh, she does a lot of turn cycling. She does a two turn sleep with skill three. It's a single target, two turn sleep. So it's not like a Hathor or anything, but she does enough turn cycling that she could be a Hathor if she gets enough crazy violent procs. Uh, it's a no-brainer for me. It's not even close. Um, Miang is a great unit for Guild Siege. If you happen to already have these two, Miang is not a bad unit to build multiples of. Antares is a great unit for against aggressive control teams in RTA. If you know your opponent outruined you and they're going to get a billion turns, Antares can cut in. You know how Antares works. And then uh, Orochi, he used to be a, a great unit at the very beginning of the game, but since Abyss Dungeons and Dots, it really doesn't matter anyway because... Those are the normal element at fours, and we're mostly talking about LD4s. Week number 11, this is another no-brainer pick for the top one, because Light Kung Fu Girl is such a ridiculous unit. We even brought five of her into Dragons and ran the dungeon, and it successfully beat the dungeon. Ridiculous unit. She does strips, she does attack each decrease, she does defense break, she does turn cycling, she does revenges, she does so much stuff. Um, Dark Brownie actually did get better over time. If your opponent's using a lot of immunity, you can kind of screw them over by turning all of that immunity. Well, a lot of buffs, sorry, not immunity only. Uh, you can turn those buffs sometimes when he wants to work, although his activation rate did increase over time. So if you're coming back to the game, he's actually better than he used to be. Uh, through a couple balance patches, but he's got the skill 2 that does attack power buff and crit rate buff. He's got the skill 1 that continues. Sometimes he feeds into himself and he continues to get turns and turns and turns, but really it's the skill 3 that if your opponent has a crazy amount of buffs, this unit could go bonkers and make them sleep the entire match. And uh, it's it's wild. when he works, it's sometimes wild. Chilling is a great unit. He's been a great unit for a while. Uh, he's pretty good in Guild Siege. Uh, Fire Horus, he has the Oblivion now. He did change. Uh, Wind Dice Magician also cannot be cooled down because his revive is part of his passive. It's all RNG based, so, you know. Hooray. <laughs> Hooray for more RNG. But can't be cooled down by Oliver or, or whatever else the case may be. Uh, still, easy pick. Light Kung Fu Girl. Not it's it's a no-brainer week number 12 another no-brainer dark assassin is a great unit especially combined with gemini he does the strips and the defense breaks she will do her self attack power buff crit buff and big damage and then she can do more damage when things are killed she will reset her cooldowns so dark assassin great unit especially together with gemini who we saw a few weeks uh, earlier uh, light boomerang if you don't already <laughs> light chakra if you don't already have whatever you don't have basically but the dark boomerang is the better of the two she is not uh, not terrible though uh, water death knight I think is better than these two but that's just the personal preference I know some people that really like Trevor I don't know why I don't know why but I know that they do and also wind phantom thief we don't ever actually see him I don't I can't remember the last time we did anything with the wind phantom thief we should probably revisit him week number 13 another very easy choice light joker is such a great unit that if you don't have him that is the choice end of story doesn't even matter he has a skill too that's in uh, it's an aoe skill it sometimes slows glances stuns it's the same as lucian it's not that exciting but combined with his passive which will strip and sometimes if he feels like it do bombs on things he's a great stripper for a bomb team so i personally use ciara bastet light joker and i think i use uh john the most you use whatever you want but i do like john for uh for that bomb team it's a fantastic team there's no other thing that strip well there is another unit that kind of strips and also does actually there's more than one unit that whatever it's a nice aoe strip into sometimes bombs for extra bombs for the ciara and whatever other bomber you have it's just it's an easy option uh dark succubus requires some setup to perform well uh fire sniper is if you happen to have both of them and you have multiples of them and you maybe want to build some more snipers fire sniper is not bad these two over here are uh fusion units so i really wouldn't recommend the fusion units it's a very easy choice for me if you happen to have both of them the snipers uh all the snipers are pretty good actually so 
Week number 14, this is another one that's kind of personal preference. For me, I like to use the light jack-o'-lantern because he's immune to CC, he does multi-hits, he does a few different debuffs. I really do enjoy using that unit kind of the same way that people like to use uh, Mei Hao Wang, the fire monkey, and also I like to use the, uh, the water lich as well. I think it's nice units against CC teams. Uh, and then we have, because he also stacks his stats over time, and then we have the Dark BK. Some people prefer the Dark BK because they want that crazy, I'm going to take a million turns chance. For me, I don't seem to have RNG on my side, so I don't get the not- Well, I think we did actually get one crazy, uh, where he just obliterated an entire team because he never stopped moving. Um, this is one for the Wind Boomerang, is one that people like to use for Siege Defense. Uh, and then, because she's got the speed leader, uh, and then the Freya is actually a decent combo unit. Uh, sorry, decent combo unit, decent counter unit. She will, uh, on her death, she will actually cleanse all of your team and heal them up to full. So it is kind of a nice unit against cleave teams if someone's trying to cleave you. Uh, and it's a nice unit to pull out at the very end because a lot of people aren't expecting it. Uh, and then we have the... <laughs> this is the one. This is the one that made my Celia nerfed. Well, all all of everyone's Celia is nerfed. Um, I'm going to get so many comments from people like, I don't have a Celia, so it definitely did not nerf my Celia. But they wanted to tone down her skill too. So now Celia was toned down on her skill too. And I can't ever get over that. I am. It's going to be years. And I'm still, unless they buff her. Are we just complaining about Celia? Let's move on to the next week. Week number 15, we have RNG Mo Long on the top of the list. That's basically what he is. He has his potential to keep getting crazy turns over and over and over again, depending on number one, Violent Procs, number two, the amount of uh, combos you get on his, or the, the amount of dupes you get on his dice, right? That's the only time that you would actually want dupes in this game. I suppose, unless you're LD scroll hunting, you're going to get disappointed. It's easier to just do all these Hall of Heroes. You're going to get better results from this than you will trying to hunt for LDs. Um, Light Rakshasa is, in my opinion, just not as uh, not as useful as the Dark Dice Magician. Abigail is a fantastic unit. I cannot recommend her enough. She is great for multiple different places. She's a great unit for Dragon. She's a great unit for Necro. She's a great unit for sometimes even to RTA. I have picked her in RTA. She does actually very well. Surprisingly well. Better than you think she would do. Um, while he's a great unit for Rift Beast. And then we also have the Wind Assassin who exists. No, I'm just kidding. The Wind Assassin, she can be good. There's just better wind choices. And you're going to pick one of the LDs anyway. Week number 16 is another pretty cut and dry choice. If you like to cleave, Dark Samurai. All day, every day. If you like to bruise and you're playing the long game then light nine tails but personally i think most people should go for the dark samurai uh and then for the normal element ones astra is great for dungeons she does a lot of damage and she does her aoe's with skill one malaka is malaka is malaka and then we have the uh the wind chakram dancer i just think that uh you know the, the dark samurai people are just going to go for the dark samurai Week number 17, this could go either way depending on your preference. Personally, I think that the Dark Sylph is actually a great unit. He's got a speed lead, he's got AoE sleeps, he also has block beneficial effects. I use him all the time on the LD only account. Well, I mean, whenever I play the LD only account, I wind up using him. It's a pretty nasty combination between him and the Light Polar Queen. If you can get it off, it's ridiculous and the amount of not getting turns your opponents uh, will have to deal with is it's truly wonderful so uh i think he's a great unit he's very similar to hathor i'm i've always been surprised that people didn't use him more i think he's an underrated unit because he's got the speed lead as well that's the that's the reason that i say that uh that being said light gargoyle is also another decent unit he's not the top he's he's not a top tier unit but with his passive he has to get so he's an increased cooldown unit right and he can increase cooldowns more than the cooldowns normally would be increased he could like you can have a 30 turn cooldown if he keeps getting hit but he has to actually get hit in order to increase his cooldowns he does have an aoe provoke so you can make sure that he gets hit but we took him in with a uh we made so many jokes about the fanaka malaka team it was fanaka that's his name malaka and tiana and it had a great win rate it did really really well better than i thought it was going to do i thought i just put it together because i thought it was a funny joke, but it wound up actually working really well. Uh, great team. Water Succubus, another great unit. She's got a speed lead. She's a fantastic unit. Underrated. I, I, I think all three of these are underrated, to be honest. I don't like this one, Fire Dryad. I think she needs a buff. The only reason she's not at the very bottom is because it's easier to get pieces for Sonya from Guild Shop. 
So I really don't think that there's a reason you need to get Sonya from a uh, Hall of Heroes if you're missing out on the Fire Dryad. She can be okay in some frustrating, annoying TOA teams where, uh, like for example, when the enemies get invincibility on them, like the Dark uh, dark Phantom Thief. She could be okay in a team like that because of her block beneficial effects. I just don't like her for much more than that. Week number 18, a lot of good units here. Dark Blade Dancer has to be at the top of the list though, especially if you're using a control team. She is a unit that will strip the enemy team and do an attack power break, as well as, and this is even more important, the glancing hit debuff. So strip into a glancing hit, very strong skill. People stop using her, a lot of people using Hey Gang now, uh, instead of her in terms of, because it is passive, um, for a strip and a glancing hit. Uh, she is a great, you know, I was using her a lot because Dark Ninja, of course, but she's great because if your opponent is going to take, if you're going to bring a control team, your opponent's going to take things like Diana and Vertiheal into you and Taris, different things that are going to try to use passives to stop you from getting so many turns. She is a great unit to do the glancing hit and potentially, st <laughs> if, if it actually lands, um, stop Diana and Vertiheal in their tracks. So she's a nice unit to bring against some of the things that try to counter control teams because of that strip into glancing. Again, a lot of people are using Hey Gangs instead of her nowadays, but I think she's a great unit to have in your arsenal. Light String Master is also a great unit. You can use it, the Wind String Master if you don't have the light one. They're kind of similar. Um, Wind Anubis is a great unit for anti-cleave teams. He dies, comes back from the dead, does big damage to uh, the unit that killed him. Uh, Water Phantom Thief, I feel is... He's still useful, don't get me wrong. I feel like he's less useful now, considering we have more defense break attack age reduction units, water units with Lethal and also Water Geralt. So I feel like he's a little bit less useful than he used to be, just because there's more options for where he would have fit in before. And then we have the Fire Boomerang, which is still... I mean, she's at the bottom, but she's still a great unit. She has a uh, double AoE CCs. Fantastic skill, then. Not, not that this one is the same level as some of the other units that we saw at the bottom. I think she's, uh, she's a great unit as well. I just know that people still like uh, using the Water Phantom Thief. So, uh, solid week though. Week number 19, not a crazy premium week in terms of like the normal four stars, but again, most people are just going to be picking the LDs anyway. Uh, this one, the Dark Dryad, I put her at number one because she is going to be a decent siege unit. She was, she, she doesn't see as much siege play as she used to, but she does have the siege leader skill. She also has a decrease the beneficial effect duration with skill three and an increase the harmful effect duration. We had some crazy, uh, some crazy experiences with her before, some frustrating siege defenses when she first got, uh, got buff. She's got the, did I mention she's got the speed lead? So she's got the speed lead, she's got the strips, she's got the increase uh, harmful effect durations. She also has the same second skill as the wind dryad. The Light Neo Stone fighter has, uh, he puts a shield on himself, he does some pretty good uh, single target damage. He's really good actually at the uh, the Dark Rift Beast, so he's one of the uh, one of the nice units for that if you're interested in that. Um, and then we have Lumericia, Carrick, and Fuko. I'm not going to pronounce that the other way because I get in trouble if I pronounce it to fun. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you guys know what I was going to say. Uh, she does a stun now with skill 2. He, he's a bomb detonator. He's got a defense break skill 1. Uh, AoE skill, uh, stun skill 2. Same as um, the dark one. Uh, Wind Lich was just buffed, but I think these are, you know, they're normal element nat 4s. No one's going to go for them anyway. Week number 20, easy choice. If you don't have the Dark Horus, just pick the Dark Horus. Every time your opponent gets turns, he is going to continue to increase his attack age. Also, he is a skill 2, that's an AoE skill, will attack all of the enemies and potentially strip them with his passive. Uh, it's not a great chance to strip, but he can strip. And then if you have him on despair, he can strip and stun. Sometimes your opponents are taking so many turns, they don't have immunity on them because they either didn't bring immunity or they're just taking so many turns that they take it off. So the strips don't always matter, but he's a really nice unit to uh, to have on your team when your opponent is trying to outspeed and control you and not let you get any turns. Very similar to where Antares is good. 
So uh, that's a solid unit that is the choice if you don't already have him. Second best, of course, is the other LD if you don't already have it. Uh, but I feel like he kind of isn't the situation. We, we used him a while ago, but the situation is kind of that he just lacks damage. The dark one is better, of course, because dark one's got a crazy passive that just ignores all the uh, all the nasty stuff you put on him. Wind sniper is actually a pretty decent unit against Hey Gang and more in RTA. Uh, I like to use him if my opponent is using. Uh, things like Hey Gang and more, and also Pontos, where they have the invincibility. He will go through with the skill one. He'll go through the invincibility. He'll also likely get glanced on by the uh, the Hey Gang and the more, so he will increase his attack age. He'll give himself the attack power buff, and then go through that invincibility. I think that's the best because we've seen a few matches uh, like that. So I think that that was the best utilization of him ever, and it was crazy awesome, uh, crazy awesome stuff. Fire Mermaid is actually not that bad. Her biggest issue is she has a low base speed, but she's got increased cooldown. She's got stuns with skill two. She's got revive with skill. Uh, sorry, with skill two. She's got a revive with. She's got stuns and increased cooldowns with skill three. Oh my god, guys! She's got like she's got a revive with skill two. Uh, heal. She's got shrimp with skill one. She's not bad. Fire Mermaid is not a bad unit. I like using that unit. Uh, and then the Water Gargoyle, which we were supposed to already take a look at because he was buffed after I kept complaining about it, but we didn't look at him. But we will look at him and we will use him. I promise. Eventually, we should probably do that soon. Week 21, another easy choice. In my opinion, at least, I like the Light BK a lot more than I like the Dark Chakram. I mean, the dark. if this was Dark Boomerang, this would be the other way around. Dark Boomerang is a fantastic unit. Uh, Light BK, though, he does single target uh, damage, turn cycling. He does uh, decrease attack age for the opponent. He's got a speedly decrease attack age and stun uh, with his skill 3. Goes into Berserk mode, does even more damage. Speed lead, great unit. Uh, especially for guild content. We also have, I mean, mostly for guild content, let's be honest. Akil is a great unit for uh, normal elements. Not that anyone's going to be picking these normal elements any <clears throat> anyway, and I don't really like the fire dice. I know some people like him, but I'm not a huge fan. I never really enjoyed playing with him. Week number 22, personally, I don't have a super strong opinion on either of these LD4s. They have their pros, they have their cons. For example, light, uh, so light cannon girl, I put at the top, but depending on your preference and the teams that you use, this might be a better unit for you. It really all depends. So light cannon girl, she's got the uh, same skill one as the other cannon girl, same skill two as Abigail. It's multi hits, it's eight different hits on random enemies, defense breaks, fairly decent chance since it's so many hits. Um, skill 3, she does a single target attack, if I remember this correctly, she does single target attack age absorb, and then it's an AoE after that, it's an AoE stun, but it's only a 40% chance to stun, so... I still think that she's like the better of the choices. The Dark Hypno Meow is conditional. He does ignore defense. Um, he does sleeps with skill one. He also puts himself to sleep, but it is conditional. His ignore defense is conditional on both himself and the opponent being asleep. So aside from that, he's not going to ignore defense. Uh, then we have the Runehammer Blacksmith, which I think, you know, between this unit and also skill ups for the other ones, I think is a solid choice. Um, again, it's, you're not going to be picking the LDs anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And then we have the Fire Bladesmith. Uh, sorry, the Fire Blade... What? The Fire Blade Dancer. Not the Bladesmith. And then actually, I think that this is the most useful unit of all of them, but he's easy to get because he's a fusion monster. So we really don't have to have him anywhere near the top of the list because he's fusion. Final stretch now, week number 23, Light Samurai at the top of this list for the same reason the Dark Samurai is at the top of his respective list. A lot of people enjoy playing with those units. They do AoE damage. They do nice single target damage as well. They proc Source Scream Skywolf, even though the damage on that was sadly nerfed. The Dark, uh, the Dark Magnum, the Dark Sniper, the Dark Sniper, uh, we did see, I mean, he's not a crazy unit, but we did see some people using him in a fairly fun way with uh, Inugamis. So that was, a, that was a nice combo team with that. Fire Robo, fantastic unit. I think not enough people use him. He counters, he counters violent procs. Like sometimes he doesn't do a crazy amount, but he increases his attack age when opponents get additional turns. And he also increases his activation rate. He also has an AoE strip, which is nice. I like him very fast with good accuracy on uh, despair runes and I like to try to get decent additional damage on him but you know everything needs additional uh, decent additional damage nowadays um, light light <clears throat> 
Wind Rush Shasta. <laughs> Uh, we did some videos on her. Plenty of people did videos on her when uh, Punisher Script first came out. Uh, she was very popular in the Punisher Script teams. Uh, not quite as effective nowadays, but uh, yeah, she potential. She is the exact thing that the Fire Robo counters. So there you go. Uh, and then we have the Water Kung Fu Girl, but some of these are fairly easy to get. Like Water Kung Fu Girl has pieces from the Guild Shop. Last but not least, week 24, this is another one that for me is a no-brainer because the light black tea bunny is one of my favorite LD4s. So, of course, I'm going to recommend one of my favorite units that I just use normally on a regular basis without having it to be some someone twisting my arm for a YouTube video, right? So, this is one of my favorite units. This just got buffed. Dark Gargoyle it now starts the match in Stone State, so he's definitely better than he used to be before and more useful, more effective. Now you don't have to wait for him to get a turn to be a counter to something. He's just starts as a counter to something starts as counter to light units um we do also have this right here in case you're wondering what this is there's nothing uh this hall of heroes is going to open in april so we don't uh, this is gonna be a fire unit we don't actually know what this is going to be i kind of feel like that's going to be the fire asura maybe it's wishful thinking i don't know i feel that calm to us would probably do something like that or something similar there's, they're kind of running out of options and it's a fire unit, so there's only a handful of things that they could do with that. But I personally, I think that it might be. I mean, it's not a great chance, but it is a chance. So, and it's a newer unit, so I think maybe they might be, people might be excited for, for that. It's not like he's a super premium top tier unit either, so Comptoist could give a newer Asura unit as Hall of Heroes, and it could be exciting and... It's not like they're giving anyone a super crazy OP unit. So this is uh, this is where I would kind of rank these in the situation that it was a Fire Sword. I also think that regardless of what this is, this is probably what I would... This guy does a lot of dots, but with the Abyss Dungeons, it really doesn't doesn't matter anymore. People already have Melia, and uh, even if they don't have Melia, Abyss Dungeons don't, uh, don't need dots. You can still farm the other dungeons, but uh, but yeah, this is just... Uh, this is my, my thoughts on this. So anyway... I think we are done! Finally! All 24 weeks of this event! And then we get some Devil Mons and some extra scrolls. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Food for thought, I suppose. I know everyone's just gonna pick the LDs anyway, which they should, because they are the rarest ones. But at least that's my thoughts on these units, so you can get some input on the rest of them regardless. Anyway, that's it for this one. See you as always in the next one.